I'm Zhang Bu Xu. I'm a distinguished scientist at Pokemon National Lab. And currently, we are hosting a CFNS uh, workshop on PRM Dynamics. And there are a lot of interesting discussions. Okay. Uh, so my name is Nicole Lewis. I'm a postdoc. I was previously working at BNL. I kind of stumbled into this Baryon Junction work. Um, had a list of projects that was proposed to me, one of which was doing a particular measurement with the STAR experiment, which is at uh, Brookhaven National Lab. Um, it seemed interesting for future career things, and then we just happened to find a weird thing that led us to think of this, that it might uh, point to this uh, structure within baryons that was first proposed towards the beginning of RIC in like the 2000s. Snesi Magdi. I'm a postdoctor uh, researcher at the um, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. So my work is related to the future of discovering the baryon junction. And as explained by the scientists before me, it's the mechanism of the baryon number conservation. So I'm working on if we can we discover that in the future electron ion collider. So we're looking far to the future and see, can we understand better the quantum chromodynamics in the future electron ion collider. That's okay, hi, I am Priti Srivedi. I am a physicist at Brookhaven National Lab. Uh, so here we are meeting to uh, discuss something very important and that has really puzzled us for a very long time. It's about actually the internal structure of a baryon. Baryons are, you know, subatomic particles which carry the special quantum number baryon, but we have been trying to understand where exactly is the baryon number located. There are theories like that the quarks from textbook, they carry baryon number, but there is this other uh, alternative picture where you could think of that these three quarks are connected in a y shaped junction and the baryon number flows, actually it follows, tracks the center of the baryon. So it was kind of a dream to put together like uh, a community of people to kind of understand, investigate it. This was like proposed in 70s, right? Even it was a long time before we are, many of us were born. And then uh, in like, like last, over last two years, we started to investigate in experiment. When you open a, a textbook, it will actually tell you that protons and neutrons are made up of three quarks and each quark actually carry no only charge, but also other important quantum number. For example, the barium number, it will tell you each quark actually carry one third of the barium numbers. And the barium number, I would say it's the most conserved quantum number in the universe. It govern the universe, keep the universe as it is, and prevent proton from decays, and that's how we have us today, right? There are ideas that that quantum number may be actually traced by other ingredients. For example, the, the mediator of the strong interactions, the, glu the gluons, which can form a Y-shape we call junctions which connected to the three quarks in, in the barams. And that's what keep where the, the barium number is. And our goal is trying to distinguish whether it's carried by the quarks or in principle, the underlying is actually traced by this Y-shaped junction with a, a, a point in the middle. So I first heard of the baryon junction, and, uh, an idea, in the late 1990s when I was at CERN through talks and discussions uh, by Veneziano and a young scientist named Dima Karzev, who were also there at CERN. I left track of the whole thing for a few years only to see a recent paper by Starr uh, on, uh, on the studies uh, related to that. And then young people in our Center for Frontiers in Nuclear Science had also been excited about measuring this 
at the future electron ion collider. This is where I started looking at it again. And I was amazed just how much has happened over the 30 years on the theory, evolved in different directions, and now there are connections that are made from deep inelastic scattering to hadron-hadron scattering, both in experiment as well as in theory. It encourages me that these ideas have been held up by a broad community through our workshop that we just finished here at uh, Center for Frontiers in Nuclear Science. And I hope this, this becomes a major thrust of science for the future electron ion collider. So I'm expecting that the conclusions from this workshop will evolve into new proposals for more activities on this topic in the future.